The Rinogin Mountains are located in North Snowdonia. The nearest population centres include Barmouth and Dufwinar Dudwy. These mountains take up such a large area, you could fit the Carnedus, the Glidders and the Snowdon Massif, which are all the highest mountains in Wales, into the Rinogs. For our expedition we're going to be doing a traverse from Rinogvara in the north to Diffwis in the south. Originally we were going to do the full north to south traverse, but with the challenge of filming and far less daylight hours in October, it would simply be too ambitious. challenging terrain in all of Wales. Our first challenge is to get to the summit of that, Rinogvara. I'm going to be scrambling up boulder fields, down treacherous scree slopes, and up four of the main mountains in the Rinogs, all with the help of my cameraman Doug. This is going to be a challenge that's going to push us to our limits. We start off our journey low down in the scenic forest at the back of Rinogvara. There's not much food in the Rinogs, but in the summertime and in through to October, you'll get bilberries, which are these, these little berries on these shrubby plants. And you can tell these are bilberries because the leaves are oval and they're pretty much all that will grow with berries here. And these are good tree. We've just come out of the forest now and we're really getting into the forest. We've just arrived at Flynn Do now and when we got here it was really cloudy and now it's gone a lot clearer and that really shows how quickly the weather can change in the mountains. And what we're going to do next is find our way up to Rinogvara. You know, it's going to be a real challenge. We're quite a way up from Flynn Do now, and that's what we got to do next, that scramble up to the top of Rinogvara. So I think for this next bit, I'll use my GoPro and my helmet. The thing about all this scree is that you can twist your ankle really easily in it, so you've really got to be careful and make sure every single foothold and every single handhold is firm and secure. The cloud starting to come in again. Right. Let's do this. People have been stretched off Rinogvara and an elderly man got lost near the top. It's easy to see how, especially when there's cloud on the mountain.
After about an hour, we're at the final push towards the summit. But remember, once you get to the top, you're only halfway there. You still got to get down. over there. I really, you'll get quite a lot of these mountains in those days. It's very rare that you actually get it here. We've just come down from Rinnog Valley now. See Rinnog Vac, the next mountain which we're going to get up. And it may be smaller than this one, but it's a lot harder, and so it's going to be a challenge getting up that, but we have most of the day to do it. And then you can see just past Rinnog back, there's Elettra, which we do. We've made our own way down Rinnog Barra, and we've just descended all of this boulder. And the combination of heather and boulders is really dangerous, because the heather just and twist an angle. Um, but now we're going to make our way down the rest of Rinog Vac and up Rinog Vac, which will take a long time. Down this side of Rinog Vara, there aren't any paths. Sometimes you've just got to make your own. Due to their isolation and rugged terrain, the SAS have done their survival training here. Also, the mountain rescue teams have used this as a venue for practice. You should never wander far into these mountains without experience of mountain walking. A map and compass are essential, as well as the skills to use them. After about an hour and a quarter of shuffling, we're nearly at the bottom of the scree slope. Going down is the hardest part, and the part where accidents are most likely to happen. One down, three to go. Just finished the descent of Rinog Barra and having some lunch now. It's about one o'clock and then we'll start going up Rinog back. 
hopefully get to camp by about five. These are uh, striations of the, rock, the gritstone. Uh, these would have been made by the glaciers that went past here 12,000 years ago. A huge ice sheet would have scoured all these score lines, all these striations into the rock. And it's amazing to think that all of this would have been under ice and it's been carved by ice as well to how we see it today. The Rinogs is part of a huge anticline that's called the Harlick Dome. The rock here is Harlick Gritstone. It's 540 to 490 million years old. We're just climbing Rinog Vac now up this really steep path. We're both knackered but we haven't got much further to go. These wild feral goats make the Rinogs their home. They're perfectly built to descend screeing crags efficiently. If only we were built to do the same. picked up and at times it's quite hard to stand. With heavy rucksacks on it's easy to lose balance and hurt ourselves. We've got to keep a low centre of gravity. The tree slope is steep and the rocks are sharp and loose. You've got to maintain your balance and take your time. If you hit your head off these rocks, it's game over. Lots of the grit stone here has these quartz crystals in it and last time I went scrambling in the Rinogs 
I simply just looked around uh, to look at the view and my arm, because I wasn't wearing long sleeves, I caught it on one of these quartz things and it just sliced my arm. And so when you, whenever you go scrambling, especially in the Rinox, always wear a long sleeve. And we've just come down this pretty slope as well. about half four and so we'll make tea in an hour or so and tomorrow is going to be interesting because of quite bad but we'll see what happens tent set up, we can sit back and take in the view. So it's just gone six o'clock now and we've got our stoves on, cooking some Russian packs. I've got pasta bolognese. I've got hot noodles as well afterwards. So it's, it's quite cold and the cloud has come in a lot. So it's probably not going to be the most pleasant night, but we'll see. Something we were taught in in cadets was to use the water that you cook your ration packs with and use every bit of water you can so what I've done here is just made some tea. It doesn't look very nice but it's hydrating and I've had enough of this now but instead of pouring it away I'm gonna put it into my water bottle and then that is gonna be emergency fluids if I need them tomorrow. Uh, apart from that, that's it now. I think we're gonna have an early night. It's half six. Go to bed probably. And then tomorrow we're gonna have to go along that ridge and up to that. And then a longer massive ridge to diff with. And I just hope that the weather is better than it says it's going to be. Yeah, we've just got up in the morning. Uh, it's really foggy, and uh, yeah, you couldn't even see the mountains. We're just cook it for breakfast now, and then we'll pack the tents away and be off. We've just finished packing the tent, up. and we're going to set up. This flowing water may look clean but in fact it could carry waterborne diseases such as cholera. If you're going to drink it, boil it first. We're on the ridge above the lake and the weather is really coming in. The wind is strengthening and the rain is not far away. Heavy rain has arrived and morale is low. Today is going to be a real physical and mental battle.
reach the windswept summit of Aledra in driving rain, we're going to have to focus more on the height and less on the filming. All that there's to see is the ground. We're climbing over a wall now to shelter from the weather. We're both completely soaked through. And when you're wet, you lose heat 25 times faster. Hypothermia is a real risk. We've just got to man up and keep moving. My GoPro and mount got knocked off my helmet, so we're having to film by hand. To make matters worse, I left my GoPro on a rock. It was demoralising to have to go back and get it in these conditions. The good news is, we're nearly at the summit of Diffwis, and the rain is starting to ease. The ice sheet covered all the peaks in the Rinox, eroding them to their rugged state today. The only two peaks that stood above the ice sheet were the two highest, Eledra and Diffwis. This is why their summits are grassy. Last time I went up Diffwis, it was a sunny day and we had a picnic on the top. Not even the sandwich wrapper blew away. It just shows that every day on a mountain is a different one. down from Diffwis is an old manganese trail where the precious ore will have been transported down from the mines. Today though it's more like a stream, making the rocks really slippery. It's easy to see how a woman broke her ankle near the summit of Diffwis and had to be airlifted to hospital. We don't want that to happen to us. The side of the forest is our extraction zone. We want to get there as quickly as possible. We're both getting very cold. So we've just uh, descended from Diffwis now and we basically walked down a stream all the way and it's been really really bad weather um, and that's why we haven't been filming as much because the camera would just get too wet but now we're in this forest, we're near our pickup zone and you can see that mountain in the distance there um, is Igarn which is 629 metres high and so yeah, let's get to the car and get warm. The Rinogs have pushed us to our limits and we can see why it's such a dangerous place. But now it's time to go home and leave this remote wild part of North Snowdonia. I've been John Blackburn with my cameraman Doug showing you how to stay safe and survive in the Rinog Mountains.